What's up, Grappler fans? My family and I have the Bronco fever. My 1995 here has been so much fun taking it on the beach. We've got three in the family now, and let me get y'all updated on where we're at with them. We decided to buy this Bronco after thicking on it a little bit and letting the guy uh, take in our offer. He actually decided to go for it. So we offered him a little bit less than what he wanted and I felt it was a reasonable price. Uh, my father-in-law is cool with it. We went ahead and picked it up. So the plan for this one is uh, to have my father-in-law drive it for about a year or so as I fix up the uh, old blue one that I picked up for $1,100 that needs uh, some kind of transmission work. Uh, so I'm hoping to fix that one up, get it painted the color my father-in-law wants, and then we'll trade. I'll take over this pretty decent one finish fixing it up and then try to sell it and make a little bit of money uh, that way my father-in-law doesn't have to spend quite as much to get the Bronco restored and I get to have fun because I'm just crazy about these old Broncos ever since my wife got me hooked on them you've lost your mind uh, so with that I want to go ahead and tell y'all that I paid 9,000 for this one or excuse me my father-in-law paid uh, we got a weird kind of trade thing going on eventually but as of right now my father-in-law bought it and I paid 1100 for the other one that I'm hoping to put a transmission and a paint job and interior and stuff in. So we'll see how that all goes. Um, restoring something can get pretty expensive pretty quick, but we'll work it out in the end for now. He's really excited to drive this thing instead of his smashed up uh, Nissan Xterra that's been around for ever. He's driven that thing back and forth to West Virginia visiting family. So hopefully uh, this will be replacing this for the time being and kind of a placeholder on the uh, Bronco that he wants. This isn't really the colors he wants. Uh, he's not big on two-tone. So uh, let me know what y'all's favorite color is for a Bronco now that I've had uh, a solid green one. That I painted Kodiak Brown. Uh, we've got this green two-tone one. We've also got the two-tone blue one that has like the darker color in the middle. It's like, um, you know the old school two-tone instead of just the trim at the bottom and the top let me know what y'all think i'm going to show y'all what i'm working on with this thing uh and we'll get get to it kind of explain a little bit more while i have some time here and uh, then i'll be leaving it with him and wishing him luck hopefully it works solid i'll let y'all know if we have any more issues with it uh, a couple little quirks I've worked out already, but let me show you what we got. So I started tinkering with what I just decided to call the temporary Bronco, since uh, neither one of us plan on keeping this thing forever. And uh, I want to show you all right here, I took this panel off, and just like mine, this plastic support bracket for the dash is totally cracked. So it's not holding up this side of the dash at all. That's why it jiggles so much, as y'all saw in the test drive video. Uh, so mine is super cracked all the way across. And uh, to prevent that from happening to this one, I'm going to try to support this one somehow. Um, I don't really know if I can get this bracket. I think it's kind of part of it. But I'm going to rig something up to kind of support the weight of it and keep that thing from jiggling so much. So I just uh, took off this broken piece of the bracket and flipped it around so that now it has a little place to rest on here. You can't really see that that well, but uh, this is sticking out a good bit. And this broken piece is now sitting on top of this bracket, whereas before... It was just totally free floating. The dash was just kind of hanging there. So I feel a little bit better about that. Um, you can see the dash is like super solid now. Um, I think when you hit those bumps, it's not gonna sound all crazy in there. Uh, definitely still got some rattly door panels and everything to deal with. And uh, overall, this thing's just not very clean. Needs a new vent here, but uh, I'm not gonna, you know, do a full restoration on this thing or anything for a while. Got this panel pulled back and uh, letting the carpet kind of dry out some in the sun. And trying to track down this leak, I'm gonna run the hose uh, over around the windshield and there's a little bit of a seam here and there that is kind of not perfect. Uh, and there's also these different screws that are here. So I'm gonna see if I can figure that out. I'm um, also sealing up the uh, little bit of corrosion that was starting right here with some of this fluid film. Uh, we use this in the Coast Guard to keep helicopters from rusting, and I put it on all my projects. Whenever I did my Bronco replace the carpet, I sprayed all in the uh, 
you know, problem areas here, all the seams here, since I get a bunch of sand in mine. So I'm gonna do some on the tailgate now too. Um, try to get this uh, spare tire rack working a little bit better. Typically on mine, it pops off as soon as I hit it, but this one you gotta really tug on it. It's like embarrassing trying to open it. So I'm gonna try to get that working a little bit better and also spray some on the inside to keep this from spreading until you know, hopefully about a year or so from now when I finish his other Bronco, get it all painted and delivered to him and we trade, I'll start working on this one and uh, get all the rust out of it and respray it probably in the same colors, factory green and tan two-tone and uh, then put it up for sale. So uh, definitely got our work cut out for us with this rust, but for now, runs and drives fine. I also think I figured out what was up with the weird hesitation. Um, I had this problem on my Bronco a while back where when you went to the start position all the way forward, uh, then released, it kind of is sticky. You can kind of see here, it kind of rubs here and it stayed in between run and start. And uh, that was actually causing it to misfire and um, not want to shift gears and everything. And that happened to me a while back. So I was driving it last night and the same thing happened again where it was hesitating. I moved the key uh, just a little bit closer towards myself, turned it a little bit this way, and it started running fine. So uh, thankfully, I don't think we have a bigger issue there. I'm going to keep checking on that, but figuring it out one thing at a time. I think she's pretty solid, though. It really seems like it wants to run smooth and go down the road. Um, you know, on the highway, cruise control, everything is working really well. I think it just had a couple little quirks and some of this stuff for the time being will be a matter of some screws and then we'll get a new panel for it and stuff later but uh, I think this is going to be really solid to give him an idea of what it's like to daily drive one of these before we put all the money into kind of restoring one for him so I think it's a good fit for what we paid for it feeling pretty good about it nice new tires it's got a new motor new transmission pretty solid <laughs> Right now, just getting some fluid film on uh, all these kind of stuck and rusty parts. Anywhere over there is bare metal, it kind of rusted some. Also, I picked up this panel uh, when we went to, to buy it and peeled up the carpet, and it does have a little bit of surface rust back there. No holes yet. Uh, my Bronco had the same problem, and it looked really bad back here. Uh, water kind of tends to get in around the edges here on the tailgate, and the way it's the back glass is slanted, it kind of collects on the tailgate and makes its way in. So I know this is rusty under here, so I'm peeling this up again. Uh, he's actually got this little screwdriver that's kind of neat. I've never seen one like this. Y'all probably seen it, but it, um, it's just like a basic screwdriver that's battery powered. And uh, if I can do this with one hand, it's pretty pretty neat. You, um, you kind of start the screwdriver like normal and then you can get these out pretty quick. So just uh, making use of what little stuff he's got here and just trying to put a band-aid on some of this rust so that it's not as bad a year or so from now whenever I get around to actually fixing it and uh, getting rid of all of it. With all those screws out, here's a look at just how rusty it is under here. Uh, there's this panel here that is kind of like an extra piece uh, and it's just pretty much shot. So the plan is to shot vac all the loose rust out and then fluid film it up. Um, you know, slap a band-aid on it and try to forget about it for a year until I can actually uh, get in here and really, really get after it. I only have a few hours and I just want to make this thing, you know, last for him for a year or so. And uh, here's a peek underneath here. I need to, I picked up this tire last time. I need to get that out of here. Now the way we can see it's just got some surface rust there, which is no good. So we're going to spray up under there as well. And I'll probably get rid of these speakers that I don't even think are hooked up anymore and just kind of make this cleaner back here for him. Uh, it does have all the trim panels in here, which is nice. Um, they're all pretty rattly, but they're all here. The lights work. Uh, so it's, you know, if you can just kind of cover up all the nasty underneath and ignore it, it will be a pretty, pretty fun little ride that looks really good from the outside because the only rust on it is when you open the door um, and, you know, inside and stuff. So this rust here that I showed you all in the first video, uh, but you know, just like that, no rust. So I think it'll do for now.
doing a little project on my Bronco. The back glass started coming up crooked. Uh, the little, here, I'll show you this, It'll be a lot easier. Uh, this guy is worn out, the little plastic part, so the head of it keeps popping out of place and it comes off the tracks. So the original one here is riveted on. I just broke the head off because it was pretty rusty and I uh, started drilling it out. So hopefully I can get that out. And then this newer one here um, just has a nut. Should, should be a lot easier to install. And I also got two, so I may do the other side depending on how that one looks uh, or just keep it as a spare depending on how long this takes. But get that cleaned up. Uh, also, you can see my original paint color here. I'm uh, pretty excited about the Kodiak Brown paint, but uh, there is a couple spots where you can see evidence of the old color. Let me know which color y'all like better. Got a nice hole there that should be able to get this um, bolt and nut through. You can see I got a bunch of metal shavings I want to clean up before uh, this stuff starts to rust. Here's the little bit of the rivet that was left. I'm not going to touch it because it's probably still hot. But yeah, that wasn't too bad. I may end up doing the other one too. All right, so there's the new one. And I just found what's left of the old one in here. You can see that hole's been kind of wallered out and uh, let the head of that bolt come through. So hopefully this one will uh, fix all the issues. This thing's popped out of place a couple times uh, since I've owned this thing, but now it's gotten really bad. I guess this finally fell out and uh, it wouldn't come up and down. So getting it done, I should have fixed it a long time ago, but it's gonna be nice now. Got the back glass working now, and uh, while I have this panel off, I just want to hit the inside of this tailgate with some of this fluid film to uh, keep the rust out. The bottoms of these tailgates like to rust, and mine had some uh, down in the lower center there uh, before it got painted, so we had to take care of that. So try to keep that from happening in the future. Got fluid film on everything that uh, looked like it could potentially rust eventually, even around this perimeter of where this panel goes on. I'm at the beach a lot, so I really wanted to spray everything, and this uh, lower portion here definitely can, can rust, so try to get all underneath. Got that back panel on now, and I had a little help from my mom, who's visiting us from out of town. Uh, she's back home in North Carolina, but she's here with us in Florida for the time being and uh, she helped me film that little ops check there So everything seems to be working good. Uh, let's see if she wants to crank up because it sat for about a week And then I just started up and moved it. So let's see what happens This thing's ready to go back to the beach. Thank y'all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the videos and that you like these 90s Broncos as much as me and my family do. I think having three is a little bit crazy right now, but we're gonna end up with two nice ones, I think, when we're all said and done, and hopefully make a little profit if we can keep our budget just right.